Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Today we have an amazing duo of guests. Chef Tony Mad Dog Maggart had a story that went viral on social media not long ago. Now, he's a veteran who served in the Marines, the Air Force, and the Army for a total of 23 years. He lost his leg when he was working in Afghanistan as a civilian contractor, and now he's a chef who cooks with a ton of charisma and delivers with a fantastic sense of humor. But that's not even what brought him the country's attention. He pulled over to help a stranded motorist, and that motorist happened to be Colin Powell. They were both on their way to appointments at Walter Reed. Anyway, now that the light's been shined on him, we all got to see why we ought to pay attention to him. He's now got a YouTube channel where he mixes food and history and humor, and you should check it out. We also have Chef Otto Borsich today. He's an alum of the show and a friend, and we love him. He's also a veteran. He's been a competitor on Top Chef, and he was an instructor at the Culinary Institute of America. He cooks his ass off, and he introduced us to the concept of the gastrogasm. So now who doesn't want to be fed by Chef Otto? He's also got a book out called The Chef is Born, in which he dedicates each chapter to a person or an event that shaped his life and his cooking, features the recipe that was crucial to that formative culinary experience, and includes a related bit of wisdom by some historical figure and a related verse from the Bible. I can't say enough about how much affection I have for Chef Otto. He's just a great guy and an inspiring dude. You're going to love them both. Here are Chef Tony Mad Dog Maggart and Chef Otto Borsich. Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. This is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this East. This is Sebastian Yoder. This is Rick Morales. This is Stuart Topic. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. Hey, this is Chef Otto, author of the newly released cookbook memoir, a Chef is Born, live on the Break It Down show with Pete Turner and Mad Dog. And now, the Break It Down show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. Yeah, Mad Dog's co-hosting with me, so this is fun. Mad Dog, by the way, you're going to hear some background when he's talking because he's actually like a good chef out there trying out ribs. He's in Huntsville, Alabama at Dreamland. And if you guys know anything, you know we love ribs, so I'll let Mad Dog go in a second. But first, Otto, you've been on the show before, and it was awesome. We had uh, Chef Perdome on the show with you, and he was great. But this time you're on because you've written a book, A Chef is Born, and it's fantastic. It's short. You tell these tales about your grandma, about your dad, all these different people from your life, and then you have an, a, a recipe associated with them. So maybe it's you know your great grandpappy's crullers or something like that. But I loved it, man. I really enjoyed it. It was it was bite sized, like any good meal should be. It was like I, I was able to read it and go, huh, and then think about those flavors and then what it meant to me and my grandma. And I just I love the concept for this. Uh, how did you come up with that? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. It, it, it. It's pleasing to hear that. It's pleasing to my palate, if you will. It just came to me. I, I, I actually sort of, when I began the outline of the book, I I kind of, you know, went at it as a chef. Okay, here, here's my ingredients, and uh, here, here, here's how I'm going to build this recipe. So I just took um, an idea called A Chef is Born because I was born to do this, and I just started reverse engineering, if you will. I, I went back to day one of my birth, which you, you know about because I almost died. It's in the book. And I go from there. And, yeah, I, I had uh, a, an interesting background. I, I grew up in, in Ohio in the Midwest in the, in the 60s and 70s in a, you know, a middle-class family and had immigrant parents from uh, Budapest and, and uh, Italy. So great food cultures. So that really added a, a lot of value to the book, if you will. And I was kind of a mischief, mischievous lad, if, if you will. And I got into a few things here and there that, that were that, that, that were humorous and, and helped shape me. And talk about my first restaurant job at McGarvey's in my hometown and Eddie Salmon, who was influential in my career. So the book, the title is a bit, how should I say, misleading, uh, A Chef is Born. It's not about being a chef at all. It's about the birth of a person who was born to be a chef and how he took that trajectory to get to where he is today. Yeah, that's uh, it's super interesting. So you say Budapest is more on the Buddha or the Pest side? Yeah, right in the middle. I mean, the, food, the food scene is great there. 
Oh, oh, yeah. Dude, phenomenal, phenomenal food. So, yeah, so what inspired you to, like, get into doing the culinary thing? Uh, Mad Dog, again, uh, back. I revert back to the title, A Chef is Born. <laughs> uh, this, this, this life I have, it, it, it was predetermined. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I talk about that in the book. Um, you know, what, what five-year-old kid growing up in Ohio in the 60s decides he's going to become a chef? As I, as I like to say, you know, chefs were like ghosts. You knew what they were, but you never saw them. Uh, I, I, I grew up in a food-rich ethnic background. And, you know, I, I grew up in a large family myself, like six kids in my family. It was always leftovers. You know, if we had white rice, for example, for dinner on Monday, Tuesday, I, I made fried rice. So I was always tinkering around in the kitchen uh, with, with food. And I just, I just knew I was going to do this. So you cook throughout the book and and one of the things you talk about is this mother's day is probably going to be just passed when this book comes when this show comes out but you talk about lemon meringue pie and how it was your mom's favorite do you still make lemon meringue lemon meringue pie for your mom even though she's not with us anymore I have made a lemon meringue pie at coon's age My, myself I, I love a good lemon tart without the meringue okay but, uh, no, I haven't made that recipe in, in, in age. So when it comes to doing your meringue, are you whipping your own meringues up? Well, well yeah. When I make meringue, I, I, I do I do use I do use the straight from eggs, egg whites. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, nothing like a true meringue. Otto, uh, Mad Dog also obviously is a chef, and he has different inspirations. Can you talk a little bit about how you got going, Mad Dog? I mean, obviously – you had the military. <laughs> Mad Dog managed to put himself in the Air Force, the Marines, and the Army. So he's he he's the ultimate veteran. But when you made the leap, Otto was born to be a chef. When did you know that? Like I have to do this. Yeah, my experience the first day in the hospital was very boring comparatively. I had no clue what the future is going to hold. You know, but when I got flesh eating bacteria, I just started to think more about how can you not get sick, and so food sort of was the answer to that. And my mother was one of the worst cooks out there. So I started to think, man, I could take on this thing and like just start doing some of the cooking myself. So that's sort of what I did. So you use food as a vehicle. You had a flesh eating disease or disorder? Yeah, flesh eating bacteria. When mm-hmm. did that happen? How old were you when that happened? Uh, 2011. That was Afghanistan, my first uh, tour over there. So, wow. Yep. But I got flesh eating bacteria, had a weird mission that we were doing or whatever, and just sort of things happened the way that they did. So like write it off i stayed on active duty kept going at it as you guys look at cooking and and you know there's so much fusion nowadays one of my favorite new things is the sous i i just love that stuff and, i'm sorry i think it, your favorite thing is what i love a sous it's a burrito and sushi mixed together so yeah. like there'll be sashimi inside the burrito and i i just love these things do you guys like how how do you I guess I'll ask you first, Otto. How do you characterize how you experiment with fusion? I mean, I'm looking at your uh, apple spice cake. It's all straightforward, you know, nutmeg, allspice, cinnamon, apples. All those things are standard. But I know that, especially for you, you've got a flair to try new things. Um, that's a great question, and um, inspiration comes from a lot of places. And it, it, it's funny you talk about the sushi rito. Rito. I, I had one recently in in Atlanta, and I went to this place and. Yeah, it's it's it, it's a burrito and sushi wrapped up into one, and 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 what an interesting concept that is. Food, like fashion, like music, uh, like any creative endeavor, this this involves individuals to take what is the tried and true, if you will, and to somehow take that and reshape it into something new and exciting and different. Because let's face it, there's only so many cooking techniques: broiling, cooking, sautéing, braising, stewing. You know. How many ways can you cook a flipping chicken? Well, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but but ultimately, what I'm trying to say to you, Pete, is that in order to to give that twist, to you know, to put your autograph on it, you need to know the basics. And when I taught culinary school, I preached this to the kids because these kids today, you know, they're watching Emerald or they're watching Bobby Flay or or whoever on television, and they see this really cool dish and they want to make it, but they have no idea that that potato came from a farmer in Idaho and it was picked and washed and scrubbed and put it in a box and it's shipped to somewhere, you know, miles away from them. They don't know about the raw ingredients. They, they don't know about the techniques involved to master the, the methods to become a chef. Like I always told these students, when Jimi Hendrix played the Star Spangled Banner at Woodstock, 
he played Mary Had a Little Lamb a thousand times before that happened. Mm -hmm. Practice, practice, practice the technique. Then you can get creative and innovative and and do what you want. But you got to know knife skills and the basic cooking techniques before you do anything else. Hey, hey, Mad Dog, when you look at experimentation and you're newer newer to the chef game, how do you sort out like – yeah, there's only so many ways to cook a chicken. You can fricassee, you can, you know, flambe, whatever. I'm not the chef. You guys are. But when you <laughs> when you start I mean, to experiment, I, I what? Think, yeah. I think that there are a million ways that you could do it, like where you're going, you're like, oh, I just have a chicken. So I agree with Otto, you know. I mean, there's only so many techniques that are out there. I mean, there's dry techniques and there's wet food techniques. And of the dry, what can I do? Of the wet, can I do? But, I mean – I think today, you know, I'm really into this molecular gastronomy thing. Um, people are stretching the limits on what you can do. But when I hear a guy like Otto talk, man, these are the guys that are like, they're from the earth and they realize and they think about their childhood and they go, oh, I can take this food that I had and I can reinvent my leftovers. And there's really something to say for that. I mean, my hope is that is that more people in America would go, hey, I'm going to start cooking more for myself. I'm going to get better utilization out of my foods. Yeah, all I got is chicken, but how can I cook this chicken? How can I make this chicken last? Why are people not buying whole chickens and going online and watching a YouTube video on how to fabricate a chicken? I mean, my wife goes and she tries to buy these chicken tenders, and I'm like, or they call them chicken tenderloins. Chickens don't have tenderloins, <laughs> and it's really nothing more than the breast, so it's a huge waste. Learn how to fabricate that animal, and your money's going to go a long way. You're teaching your family something. So, I mean, there's really kind of like a grassroots effort that really needs to happen. But, I mean, in every city in the U.S., they have these restaurants that are like you just go to, and they'll just like hand you the food if you hand them money. So, I mean, folks got to really learn how to cook. I mean, that's really the thing that I'm doing, you know, is I want to continue to put more videos together out there to be like, hey, this is how you cook when you're at home. It's not that difficult. So, you know, take the ingredients that you've got and and make stuff happen. I think that's probably one of the the most fun things I like doing is showing up at a friend's house and they just open the refrigerator and you're like, we got to figure this out, man. Let's do it, you know? And so just like Otto said, you go, okay, I got this arsenal of some little techniques and stuff and this is what I'm going to do. And you set up a – you make a plan and you go with that plan. And if it sucks, you hope you have a phone number so you can call the pizza guy. That's it. It's easy. <laughs> you call the pizza guy as a backup. Yeah, so auto like Yeah, if, that, that's your backup, man. That's yeah. your plan B, you know? Yeah, the pizza is the or plan B. Or go for B. the ramen. So, so, but there are some things, you know, and look, you guys are chefs, so you want to make everything yourself. But a guy like me who cooks, sure, I can make my own yogurt, but I don't got the time for that. It's not, if, matter of fact, it's probably more expensive for you me to make You do yogurt. have the time to make your own yogurt, man. That's the, one of the biggest misconceptions. All if right. you ever starting to do stuff like sous vide, you could be like, oh, I can make my own yogurt at home now. And I can, I can, uh, I can make my own cheeses at home. I can make everything that I want. I can make it at home. What do you think we did 150 years ago? You couldn't go to a place and buy food. You had to make it. Otto? It's out there. Yes. Go ahead. Expand on that, please. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, the, the you know, Mad Dog touched on the uh, molecular gastronomy, and, 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 and it's great, and it's the evolution of cuisine. And, you know, th- these guys are like mad scientists. And, you know, but at, at the end of the day, if you look at those chefs, and I'm talking the, the entire population around the world who are successful with that, who have their one and two and three star Michelin restaurants, you know, there aren't very many. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it, it, it's not a very crowded field of these molecular gastronomy uh, chefs who, who are doing that well. And at the end of the day, what what, what needs to be done is, again, I, I'm preaching fundamentals. Right. You know, you want you you want to you you know you want to. So here here here's something that a lot of chefs have a problem with, and the problem is really not on the chefs; it's on the other people. And those other people, they will never ask chefs over to their house for dinner. They they are freaked out about cooking for a chef. Okay, and the ones who are brave enough, if you will, who do, say they'll pull out some complex recipe from Thomas Keller's French Laundry Cookbook or something else, right. and try and make this thing to impress me because that's what I want because I'm a chef uh-huh. and, and nothing can be further from the truth people. because you know what I want when I go to your house, man, I want what you make the best. You, you, you know, you make your grandmother's sour broughton or your dad's barbecue ribs or your aunt Jenny's fried catfish or whatever it can be. Because why? Because you were raised on that. You ate that. You can cook that in your sleep. 
So for all the people out there and, and, and who are listening, if you have a chef friend, invite them over and cook what you know how to do. And I promise you, they will love it. So when, when you were out there and you get someone to cook for you, what's a meal that just blew you away that uh, just hasn't stuck in your repertoire where you're like, I, you know, I love it, but I just have never come back to it. Like uh, if you came to my house, I would make you Moroccan chicken with the melon relish and an appropriate cocktail to go with it. Like, a, you know, there's, there's a tea that I make. So, um, but that doesn't mean you're going to make that for anybody else ever. Are there dishes where you're like, oh, I wish I just, I just never, it just didn't stick. And I love, bro, I love Moroccan food. It's one of my favorite cuisines. I love Moroccan food. So let's say that I made something that you loved, but it's just not in your wheelhouse flavor wise. And you just, for whatever reason, have never come back to it. Has someone ever wowed you? You're like, man, I really, you know, I should have, this pressed chicken I have was wonderful. And I've always wanted to make it, but just never got back to it. Like what stood out that hasn't made it into your repertoire? Well, that, that's an interesting question because 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 if it stood out that much, I would have snagged it and put the outer spin on it. All right, you know, I, you know my interpretation. You know, off the top of my head, I, I just can't think of anything. But you know, I I have an open mind. You know, back in the day when I was you know young buck cutting my teeth and you know becoming a chef and you know, hey, I, I mean, I would save money to go to a Michelin restaurant or or, or a highly ranked restaurant and eat that food and 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 be wowed. You know what I mean. I mean, it's got to really be a full on experience like like the French Laundry or or what have you for me to do that these days. Now, hey, I go to mom and pop joints, you know, Thai place up the street serves great Thai food, you know, a little Vietnamese place, a barbecue joint. I mean, I really do love a hole in the walls. And you know what? You never know. You might find something inspirational from a hole in the wall. And same question to you, Mad Dog. When people cook for you, what do you want to have from them? And, and, and what's what has stood out? Oh, I don't want to sound like I'm riding on Otta's uh, coattails, but I'm the All exact right, same way. I want to, I want to know, I want to know where you came from. When I'm in Africa, I want to have your food. You know, when I'm in right. your country, I want to have your food, and I don't want to have any preconceived notions on what I think that thing is going to be like. I just want to go for it. Some things I'd probably pass on. You know, like eating uh, chicken brains in in Beijing. Might pass on that next time, or have more liquor. Who knows? You know. But you have some things that just transport you. And I think really that's what it's all about is making food that like you have an emotional connection to. I mean, who cares that I went to culinary school? Sometimes there's nothing better in the entire world than a fried bologna sandwich. That is so. true. Yeah. One of the guys that co-hosts a lot is Scott Hughes, and he's an author, also a veteran. And he's got this great story where he and Coolio, who's got a cookbook and is also a veteran, uh, he and Coolio uh, had bologna sandwiches at, at, a, uh, at a ski resort. Coolio's like, come on, let's go get some chow. And his chow was bologna. But what's better than that right there? You know, like you're tailgating as you're skiing and not spending $15 on a half ass sandwich. You're having a sandwich with Coolio. How cool is that? That is cool, bro. I didn't know Coolio was a veteran either. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I could be wrong on that, but I believe that he, he was. I do think yeah, just that's go with it. We already said it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Got to live with it now. Um, yeah, so Otto, when, when, in terms of the book, which, by the way, again, I read it, and I think it's awesome. If you guys buy the book, buy it on Amazon because it'll rank higher. Rate it. Review it. These are the big things that help. Same thing with all of Mad Dog's videos on his channel. You rate and review. That really is where the difference is. Come, just leave a comment, and that helps get it higher in the search. That's how you support these guys apart from buying the book and that kind of thing. Otto, you – you, the last time we talked, you were working on a couple of different job options that you were going to maybe move into. What are you doing for your day-to-day -day job right now? I'm doing webinars, podcasts. Nice. <laughs> Selling books. I, 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 I didn't send you my fee, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so, I, so first and foremost, um, I moved from Texas two years ago to South Carolina to be here with my 91-year-old father, and I'm, I'm taking care of him. Good. So, the, so the grind of the restaurant um, has uh, gone by the wayside for right now, because uh, that 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 is not giving me the time that I need uh, to take care of my father. Uh, so basically, what I'm doing now is I'm doing freelance chef gigs. I'm doing I'm doing pop up dinners. Um, I also um, work for my church. They uh, they 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 have a. Uh, large i couldn't even tell me a square foot but it's a five million dollar event center mm -hmm. where they host, they host concerts they host me like, like like boeing will meet there or Vavil or or mercedes-benz they'll, they'll have you know 
quarterly meetings or whatever. They'll, they'll, they'll do a Mother's Day brunch, if you will. So I help with that. Um, at this stage of my life, I'm not out there trying to, you know, make a name for myself or get my name in papers because I'm such a fantastic chef. And, oh, isn't this menu great? My focus is taking care of my father, first and foremost. And working in a restaurant does not provide that work-life balance that's needed at this time. Yeah, I hear you. And what about you, what about you, Mad Dog? Still writing contracts for the government, trying to figure out how to stop doing this so I can do something more relevant in the kitchen that's more fun. <laughs> I mean, you sort of get yourself into a career and you're doing it for a long time. You just know how to do the job. So, yeah. you know, it provides extra capital. And so I'm sort of like planning now. Like, what's the future supposed to hold? No clue. Right. I mean, but do you see yourself if as... you guys as... find out, let me know. <laughs> right? Well, look... <laughs> If you're looking for the guys that have a clue, it's certainly not me, man. I'm, I'm I didn't join three different services, but I've had several different careers. I mean, a podcaster, spy, come on, <laughs> I'm not even supposed to be alive. Yeah. Um, but when you do look at what you might think your path is, though, Mad Dog. I mean, obviously the videos are one thing, but do you, like like Otto said, you don't have to have a restaurant anymore. Hell, you can have a truck, and, and I know you like to ramble. Do you just go around and just? just do the food truck thing indefinitely and just go live life that way? Or what, what do you, what do you see as something that you might be interested in? Oh, we have something that's in the works. It's a little bit bigger than just a food truck. Uh, I'm going to renovate a Metro city bus and turn it into a rolling restaurant. A Metro city. Uh, that's a sizable bus. Wow. <laughs> it's 70 some people. Holy shit. And so what kind of restaurant would you have? And would it be like French or something like that? Or would it be like city? No. Food? No, you would just figure stuff out, and you'd have a sort of a changing menu mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and drive folks around. Man, that's awesome. What a great Nobody's idea. Nobody's ever done it. Nobody's done it in L.A. They've never done it in New York. They've never so done it's, it anywhere. It's, 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 so, Mad Dog, what you're saying is, or what your envision is, or what I'm envisioning is, this is like a food truck on steroids. Yeah, pretty much. It's a, it's a metro bus, a city bus, that you're going to convert into a restaurant. Yep, 100%. When and you... Like, yeah, go ahead. You can you can just roll the town, any town with, and and this is going to have a full on kitchen dish area, and, and and seating. No, no, no. I'm here in Huntsville, Alabama, and if you guys don't know it, this is going to be one of the biggest cities. It's the number ten um, growth city in the entire U.S. right now. They're going to have forty thousand more people in like two to three years. So everything's growing out of control here. Why? Everybody comes here. It's Rocket City. Yeah, Rocket City. So. Yeah. Space camp, motherfucker. I've been through that neck of the woods. My pastor's from Alabama. So this idea about this rolling bus, I love this. Would you so you do one regionally in Alabama and then expand to somewhere else or or would this be truly a mobile I mean, the restaurant? Hotel, the hotels are booked here. You, you could stay right here in Huntsville and just see what happens. But nobody's ever done it before, so who knows what will happen. But when I mean, you start thinking about brick and mortar, um, all the taxes are associated with that. I yeah. mean, I think you have some rolling oh, it's stock. Crazy. You, know, you can just do what you want to do. Right. You could do some you could do some high end dining in there. People got a lot of money, so your quest as a chef is to figure out how to pull twenty dollar bills out of people's pocket without them knowing it. Yeah, and 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 to piggy, piggyback off that, Pete and Mad Dog. So like one one guy that I you know am a client with, if you will, or hired gun, if you want, um, is he's got a company called uh, Food Fire Knives, and he's here in Charleston. He's actually setting up shop in Charlotte next month, and you go to the website and. For lack of a better def- definition or description, it's like Uber for chefs. Wow! Yeah, you're you're coming into Charlotte, or you're coming into Charleston, and 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 you're renting an Airbnb, and um, you know you, you you're with six eight people, your army buddies, your college buddies, whatever. You you're with a group, and you're you're getting together, and and you're in town, and you know what? One night you just want to hang out and smoke cigars, and 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 and, and drink scotch off your beautiful deck overlooking the Atlantic Ocean, and you look up Food Fire Knives, and boom, you've you, you got this list of chefs, you've got this list of cuisine, or they'll custom make anything you want. They'll come to the place, they'll cook the food, they'll serve you, and you're going to have a restaurant experience like that's second to none. It's going to be so personalized for your particular party, and, and I do a lot of that here. I tell you what, I do a lot of bachelorette parties because <laughs> Charleston is a great – city and for some reason a lot of women love to come down here and do bachelor parties i do a lot of those 
Yeah, it seems like the era of having to have a, a large spread of restaurants like that is that's certainly still a thing but you're right you can have a lot more freedom by custom delivering a chef experience either via bus via truck or just via your home and and do like uh, my buddy craig out in kansas does where he does a thing called table ocho basically you can hire him out either come to his place or he'll go to yours and then he'll make you this wonderful you know chef prepared yeah. meal right there with the wine that's paired and uh, it's just such a neat time to be able to do those kinds of things you know i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna tell you something uh pete this, this, my dad is a guy very few words mm -hmm. and i'll never forget what he told me the day i went to boot camp as i'm as i'm waiting for my government vehicle to come and take me to cleveland to go to the afe station he said hey he said you picked a good profession you'll have a job for the rest of your life people gotta eat yeah <laughs> That was 1978, bro, and people are still eating. <laughs> still, still eating. <laughs> Mad dog. What? <laughs> what kind of advice did you get? Like, because like, look, you're like me. You got Wonderlust. You're a rambler. You do this. You do that. Yeah. Right now, you do contracts, but you're also a, a world class trained chef. So when when you got the advice and you're like, yeah, this is really going to be my thing. What was that moment? Was it way back a long time ago or and you finally got around to it as an adult or what, what was, what's your story? Well, let me go back to what Otto was saying about, uh, about some of these famous chefs and, and the guys that are famous don't consider themselves chefs. He, Jock Pepin doesn't consider himself a chef. He says he's a cook at best guys like Thomas Keller. I mean, they just been at it their entire life. Um, and Thomas Keller's reeling back going, we need to get back to the basics because we have all this machinery that's making us forget how to do the fundamentals of cooking. We've got to get back huh. to doing that. So, um, for me, I think the big thing is like jumping in the kitchen, just like not being afraid, just experiment with stuff and try things out and see what happens. I mean, so just like Otto was saying, you got to, if you want to perfect something, you got to do it over and over and over again. But I mean, in the end, when you're in the kitchen, dude, just take some fruits and vegetables and mess around, figure out these techniques and put some stuff together. You know, in the end, I think a lot of times you get surprised by things, you know, when I went over to a friend of mine's house and, you know, they had never had a gastric before and you just go and you kind of make a, uh, a caramel and then you add some vinegar in there. And the next thing you know, you have something that tastes phenomenal that you've never had before. Now, high-end restaurants are doing that, you know, but I think it's such an easy thing to do. I think the problem is, is these restaurants charge an enormous amount of money just for the technique. And so I think that, you know, it should be brought to the common person on how to cook great food. The big thing with the Internet is when you're making YouTube videos, you can reach millions of people. I mean, I found that out with this whole Colin Powell tire changing thing. You can reach that was awesome, million million people in a, in a number of days. You can do it, you know? Yeah. yeah I, was, I was on the uh, Steve Harvey show two weeks ago. You, you know, millions more people that end up seeing your face. So, but, you know, you have to be the person that's getting the word out, you know, trying to teach folks how to do something productive when it comes to being in the kitchen show those techniques uh, that's what i think you know the government hooked me up paid for me to go to culinary school um in new york and it was phenomenal so i mean why not give that back to the people yeah and if you guys go to youtube and type in chef mad dog maggot make mad dog one word chef mad dog maggot you'll you'll see and there's recipes going up on there and he's doing more and more of them all the time you guys got to support that and of course Otto's book is out these guys are they're like, like you guys are saying, you guys are like us. You like to cook. You're the kind of chefs that you're not going to come out and shake your fist at someone. We have one of those in my hometown in Benicia. It's almost kind of like a joke. It's embarrassing, but it's kind of a joke where you'll come out and say, dog food, you know, and yell that kind of thing. You guys aren't like that. You guys actually want to be part of the eating experience and the life experience. And uh, shoot, for all of us folks out there, and just thanks for, uh, for taking that kind of an attitude, making yourself accessible, because there is that air of chefs being something that's uh, unapproachable, and you guys clearly are, are approachable. What? Um, get oh, I only have one leg. You can always approach me. I'm not very fast. <laughs> that's true. Oh, my God. But they the were... other leg, don't wait. Which one's the good one? The the uh, the replacement or the old leg? Because at this point in your life, you got to be like, oh, the other one's kind of good. Oh, I got another surgery coming up on the 22nd of May, man. They're going to chop more leg, take more nerves and stuff out. So I'm like never out of the woods, man. They're always doing stuff. God They're damn. always wanting me to try out new legs and stuff. So, I mean, it's just kind of the way that it goes. So unlike a chef who sticks with a knife for 40 years, you're not going to do that with a fake leg. 
Yeah, the fake leg. No, okay. I always like to stack features together. Like, um, I think every business should have like a uh, a like your analysis testing facility because like whoever wants to go to Quest Diagnostics, you're like, I'm gonna get myself some coffee and then pee in this cup and then out the door. You know, like so maybe you can turn your leg into some kind of extra accessory as well. Like, put a blender or knife. How about a knife sharpener? That'd be great. Yeah. I could do that. You want to do that? We we made a uh, we made a peg leg out of a uh, a baseball bat, and so I can I can send you pictures of that. That thing is sweet. A knife sharpener. I can do that. Right, and then just freak out the audience, like or the you know the the customers <laughs> take that chef knife. Yeah, yeah. Shing, shing. <laughs> you need mad dog scissor hands. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah. Yeah, that's and fun. the good thing is, even if you slip, you can't cut it off because it's already missing. You know, so, right. yeah, You're yeah, right. yeah. Right. <laughs> well, that's hilarious. So, uh, both of you guys like to travel around. Do you see you guys moving? I mean. Otto, you're always on the go. Cleveland, I think you were in Texas one of the times I checked in on you. You were obviously in California when we met. Are you going to continue to try? I mean, obviously your dad is is not well and you're caring for him. But once you get to a point where you have some more freedom, do you want to go out and and range out and do more things? I mean, Mad Dog, you were in Africa earlier in this show. So what do you guys see as as far as do you not? Are you guys guys that don't want roots? I love root vegetables. Yeah, they're fantastic. <laughs> Who doesn't love roots, man? Carrots, you know, tubers. Yeah, they're all roots, you know. They take a long time to cook, but they're good. <laughs> what about you, Otto? Do you, how much and do I you love, love? Yeah, I love Alex Haley. I mean... <laughs> yeah, you know, let me ask you that. You have Alex Haley quotes. You also have uh, biblical passages in your book. What uh, what made you pick those mo- those things? And then how did you come down to decide those were the passages that you wanted? Wow, great question. I, again, I you know, as a chef, uh, that was the mentality going into making this book, to building this book, to creating this book. I wanted to give value to the reader. This episode of the Break It Down Show is brought to you by Lions Rock Productions. That's us. We publish, evaluate, and develop podcasts just like this one, consult others to build their own, and create associated content and content marketing strategies. So if you're launching or expanding your social media presence, your business, or your personal brand, or if you just want to take your media presence to the next level, reach out to us on Twitter at PDA Turner or at John LG69 at the Break It Down Show. There's a thousand ways to get a hold of us. Now enjoy the show. I wanted to give value to the reader. So you start from each chapter, from the beginning of the chapter, right? Every chapter has a soundtrack that goes with it. It's like a wine and food pairing, right? Yeah. This chapter goes great. Boom. Okay. Um, so that's how it starts out. Then you read the chapter. And then the original was to um, just do the biblical quote. And then I got to thinking... Some people, A, might get offended. Uh, there may be some people who aren't believers. Um, so I got to I gotta flip the switch on this here. And so that's why I decided to use a contemporary quote as well and put both of them in there. And I have people tell me, I don't want to go, you can't do both. And that's why I say, don't tell me what I can do with my book. So that's why you got both quotes in there. And then the recipe, you know, came in there too. So, But I, I, I love quotes. It's it, 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 it sort of like is a is a finishing touch. It, it brings all that chapter together yeah. and it makes the reader ponder about what they just read and, and what meaning they not only got from the story, from the quote and from the Bible passage. But the Bible is a big book and there's a lot of passages in there. So you have a command yeah. of the Bible. How do you sort out? I mean, it, look, there's all kinds of different ways to say things, the same things from the Bible. How did you come to pick the, the verses that you picked? That's a great question. At the end of the day, Pete, it, 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 um, it, 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 just, came, it just came down to what resonated with me. So if, if you and, and Mad Dog and myself were writing a book about freaking meatballs okay and the publisher said hey every chapter here you got to get a biblical passage about something well yeah. meatballs was a was a bad title <laughs> but anyway <laughs> uh so we're, we're, we're writing a book about life and and, and the publisher is the man and we have a biblical, biblical quote okay and this chapter is about marriage yeah and there's tons of topics about marriage in the bible right yeah well what resonates with you what resonates with mad dog and me are three totally different you know points of view 
and at the end of the day, like, okay, that quote really hits me. It resonated with me. I, you know, that that's why I chose the quote. That, that, that was large and short of it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Matt, but it was fun researching all that stuff, Pete. Oh, I bet. It really, it really was. I mean, so, I mean, Alex Haley is a deep pole nowadays. You know, he was, he was huge when Roots was going on and the whole miniseries was going on and he was still with us. But now that he's not, you know, you, that, that comes from a certain stamp in time. What, mm-hmm. what about Alex Haley stands out for you? Why, why does he, why does he make the book? And, and, and again, Pete, let me, let me clarify. It wasn't that he stood out to me. The fact was I needed a quote for that particular chapter. Yeah. And, and I, so I'm looking for quotes about grandmothers. Right. And, and I'm reading this quote and he said, grandparents are sort of like, what was it? Fairy godmothers or something. They, they sort of sprinkle fairy dust and everything. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is freaking perfect. Yeah. And it just so happened that Alex Haley said it. Uh, Mad Dog videos. Yes, sir. What's that? You're gonna. You have the videos. They're coming out. What uh, are you looking to up the pace of those things, or, or how frequently can we expect to see a video from you? Yeah. So now that I'm getting everything established, just bought a house here. Got an awesome, awesome kitchen. Um, like. I never expected that that I would have um, the kind of range that I've got in my kitchen, but it's going to be a sweet setup for cooking. And so my intent is to continue to get more video equipment and get out there on the streets. I want to go out to these uh, small um, places where people are barbecuing and just having parties and stuff like that and seeing how people like do it, how, how families come together. Cause I think that in our lives, we've gotten so busy that we're not slowing down, you know, to, and, People are, take time out of their life to have get-togethers and stuff like that. So what I want to do is to be able to film that portion of life going on. So being military, I've traveled to 63 different countries only so far. Food is the number one unifier around the world. It's the only thing that everybody does at least once a day, and they almost always do it with other people. And so – Food is that thing that brings people together. So it doesn't matter what your political beliefs are, your religious beliefs are, no matter what your beliefs are, people are going to eat, you know? And so people are going to sit down and they're going to break bread. I mean, that's just the way the world works. So it's like, how do you, how do you capture that? How do you capture those moments and then translate that to other people to say, man, just slow down in life, you know, like learn some of these techniques, learn how to cook, learn how to be part of that thing, you know, and fight your friends over, you know, throw little parties and stuff where you have, you know, just a few people where you're making some food, you know, but it's that thing that will bring you together. So stop watching TV and get out and live. Now I've lived more the past two years than I think that I have in my entire life because I have a very conscientious focus on making sure that I'm not sedentary, that you just continue to keep moving and you're always continually learning and growing. And I'm probably the only person that I know that goes to sleep with a cookbook, but dude, it's just always on my mind. That's all I think about is food. So I think maybe that's the only way I know how to translate it now is to be able to continue to make videos and put stuff out. What was that moment two years ago that made you decide? Was it was it your health with the leg or is it something else that accumulation? What what made you change decide to keep moving, keep getting better, keep interacting? Well, I mean, I've had 35 um, different surgeries. So, I mean, no one surgery is more significant than another, but I'm kind of like over it. I just sort of felt like, Dude, now is now is the time to grow. So last uh, June, I got out of the army and uh, retired, and so I'm going now. I don't necessarily have to work, you know. I've got income, and I'm doing just and. Uh, but I always had that burning feeling of, dude, I've got to go to culinary school. I told my wife before I flop, I've got to go to culinary school and learn this black magic. It's just like Otto will tell you. Once you do go to culinary school, you just learn in the techniques and stuff. So then it's up to you on how you put those techniques together for whatever you're going to make. So, but in the end, I think that it was really rewarding. So I don't know if I had a one unifying moment, unlike changing Colin Powell's tire, like yeah. here's my unifying three minutes, you know? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it, it is an incredible yeah. moment. And, and you're like, so we, we have a lot of people that talk about these things because I think they are important messages. Get out, get moving, cook, that kind of thing. And uh, this guy, he's a ski bum, right? That's his job. He's his name is Matt Mosteller, and he's like, go out in nature and let just let it awe you, let it fill you with wonder. You just can't get yeah. enough of that. And and when you think about some of the best moments of your life, it's often a great meal with a great conversation, and everybody's just they're at their best, and you're just filled with such happiness to be in that moment. Uh, it's great to be able to create those things. 
Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. You know, uh, I had a I had a moment in 2003 when the mission that we were doing, we didn't know that uh, Iraqi freedom was going to happen, but it did happen on March 19th of 2003. And the nature of the mission that we were doing, we didn't have any food. Huh. And uh, we only had MREs. And locals, where we were at, on the mission that we were doing, said, we're going to start bringing food to you guys and feed you. And so these guys were feeding us out of their home. And I said, these are the same people that were in the U.S. They were saying, these are the people that took down the World Trade Center. And I kind of realized that was further from the truth, man, that there was a, a few bad apples that were out there, but the majority of folks out there in the world are really good. And so when people go, we've got this conflict going on, and we're going to cook out of our out of our homes to take care of you Americans, you go, man, this is, this is what love really is all about, man. This is what brings people together. So... It's, uh, I think you can have, you know, experiences and stuff in life that just really change you. Otto, what you expand on that? Because obviously you've experienced that throughout your career, whether you're on a submarine or, or behind a, a chef's counter. Yeah, um, hey, it, it's magic. What can I say? But like e- even to the point where, uh, you know, honestly, gentlemen, you know, one thing I've always wanted to do, I love words. I always had to sort of book, but <laughs> I, I love words and I <clears throat> something that I've, I've uh, always toyed with was like, wouldn't it be cool to bring a word into, into the English language that gets put in the lexicon? Yeah. And so that word uh, I created is, is actually in the book. I talk about that. I to, to, to lead up to it that you know I, I talk about how, and some people may disagree with me, and others won't. But that's all well and good. That's that's the beautiful thing about America's freedom. But anyway, I, I say in the book that food is better than sex. And I don't care how good it is between the sheets. <laughs> I don't care how good it is between the sheets, gentlemen. Yeah. Food, food, food arouses every single sense, and it can pick you up and transport you to another place in time. Okay? That's magical. Okay? That is something that happens, and that translates into a gastrogasm. A gastrogasm. A gastronomic orgasm. You heard it here the first, gastrogasm. folks. Gastrogasm. Yeah, breaking down I love show. it. Gastrogasm. So yeah, it's it, it's it, it's something special. It, it's something that, and it's not only things chefs can do. Anybody can do it. Because let's face it, man. When I mean, one of the greatest compliments I got was, um, I was I was uh, involved at a graduation uh, at, at the CIA, and and this gal Fernandia, her her parents were up from Mexico for for the graduation, and. And I've been in Mexico countless times, and I love it down there. It's a fantastic nation and, and hardworking people who who are employed, by and large, in all these restaurants across this country. And um, the parents were there, and I want to do something special. That they, they were they, The graduation was, was in December around Christmas time. I made these cookies that my mother used to make at Christmas time. They're basically an oatmeal cookie uh, shaped into a candy cane, and she frosted it with little, you know, powdered – powdered confectionery sugar with water and some some green food coloring or red food coloring for the stripes for the candy cane with peppermint extract and i gave these cookies to the mother to fernandia's mother wow and fernandia said um you know chef otto chef borsage you know my mother doesn't eat sweets and even the mother told me that uh i don't eat sweets but but i'll try this maybe she was wanting to be nice yeah she starts biting the cookie and she and she takes another bite and another bite and another bite and like the family is kind of astonished to watch their mother eat this cookie and i'm not sure if it was dietary reasons or or allergy or whatever but she went back for another cookie what (laughs) she went back for seconds on these cookies right and she's eating it And, and and fernandia she she dug her her, her hands into my bicep and, and, and it's in my ear saying, Jeff, my mother does not eat sweets. I'm like, wow. Okay. So the grandmother then says to me, uh, not the grandmother, the mother, the mother says to me, these cookies taste just like my grandmother's. Wow. I mean, th- that's like the ultimate compliment right there. Yeah. And I wasn't studying. I wasn't studying out to make the best cookie in the world and to receive that compliment. I made some cookies that my mother used to make when I was a kid at Christmas time. And to make those and pour every bit of passion into those into that cookie dough and shape them and paint them perfectly with the icing and then give them to that woman, you know, Fernandia's mother, and to have her say that, oh my God. Hey, so I've got to ask all the questions. I want you guys to ask each other a question or two. So 
Mad Dog, you've got Otto sitting across from you, you know, a notable chef. What do you want to ask him? Yeah, so how do you do it? If you're putting a book deal together, like, how do you make that happen? Well, I actually didn't put a book deal together, my brother. Um, at, at the end of the day, and let's face it, the, the Internet has turned the world upside down. Everything has changed with the, with the uh, you know, invention of the Internet, if you will. So there's basically two ways to get published. You either get a publishing deal or you self-publish. So my thought was, hey, this is my story. No one's going to write it better than me, and I don't. And I, and I don't want to lose the rights to this book. And I want to make the most money, or what little bit of money I'm going to make. I, I want that in my pocket, not not the big five publishing houses. So I didn't even attempt to get a publishing deal. I knew I was going to self-publish from the get-go. Um, so that's really how it happened. Did I answer your question? Yeah. 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 That's great. Good stuff. Otto, yeah. what question do you have for Mad Dog? That's a great question. I would like to know um, what what was what was the, uh, the the light bulb that went off in your head for this metro uh, the bus food truck that you're going to do. That's a pretty wild idea. I love it. Well, I started looking around, you know, and I'm like, I see that like people have done stuff with school buses, but then I thought, you know, they're too hot, they're too high, cumbersome to get on, and so I started looking like, what are some other options? And I was in New York looking out the window when I was in culinary school, and I said check out this bus, man. It's so easy to get on and get off of. I said, dude, I got to put this idea together and start testing this stuff. So I would get drinks and stuff like that. And I would ride the bus and see if they would like, you know, they would spill over and all that kind of stuff. So I'm like testing this thing, you know? And, um, it was just purely, uh, Hey, nobody's ever done this before. Let's jump out there and make it happen. So, and then, so, you know, when I, I see these folks that are cooking, like three people, like can run awesome kitchens in, in a tiny little kitchen. Yeah. Um, you're like, dude, it's totally possible to do. You know, I can't believe that the end of Barry Washington is a three Michelin star restaurant now. And like you bump butts when you're in the kitchen, just trying to cook stuff. It's absolutely tiny. And they're a three star, you know, place. So I said, it's totally possible to do. I've seen the fluctuation of people here in Huntsville. I said, dude, maybe this will be the spot, man. You just tour people around in different locations and stuff and see all these events that they got going on, you know, and they can have an awesome meal. So, so this is, why not? So this is not going to be a food truck in terms of you're going to pull up to the fairgrounds or wherever and, and, and park and people, you're, you're actually going to have guests in that bus and you're going to be driving around. Is that what I'm? Yeah, we'll have chandeliers. It's just going to be a fine dining experience. They're going to have, they're going to have quality food. So, yeah, I don't want to be serving corn dogs, although, you know, I do like making gourmet corn dogs. But, uh, but yeah, I want them to have an awesome rolling dining experience. That's I've awesome. never seen it before. never heard of it. That's a brilliant idea. There, there was a French chef. I, I think I may be mistaken, but I, I think it was Jacques Maxime. Anyway, this was back in the 80s, and he had purchased an old theater and renovated it and made a restaurant out of it. And the stage yeah. – is where the kitchen was and the stage had, you know, the huge velvet curtain. Okay. And at the end of the night, when service was over, they had curtain to, to expose the yeah. stars of the show. That's, that's kind of, that's a, beautiful. This is kind of a novel idea. So that, you know, I, I'm, I'm intrigued with your, with your bus idea. I think it's great. I mean, that's a really interesting concept you got there. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. So, yeah, like, I love that's it. it. People got to eat, bro. People got to eat. They got to eat. People got to eat. <laughs> I love it. I, I do think it's a great idea. Like you said, no one's done it. What, is it a double decker bus in your head, or is it uh, just strictly a one decker? No, 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 because that's too much climbing. You'll, I'll, uh, if you go and you look up a Metro City bus, man, it's like they're only a few inches off the ground. It's easy on, easy yeah, off. And you're going, you want folks to dress up to come out on, and do this event, you know, and drive them around to all these places and stuff. And they have like this fine dining experience and they're just like rolling down the road, you know? Mm-hmm. No, and and Mad Dog, so. let me ask the question. How much does a used Metro bus go for these days? They're only like 40 grand. Oh, oh shit. That's wow. like the price of a food truck. Yeah. It's like a regular food truck. Yeah, exactly. But you could fit, you know, like 50, 70 people on there. Well, hey, now now that we're uh, you know in touch here, and and we made the introduction through through Pete and break it down, and and we appreciate that. I'd, I'd love to get to Huntsville and 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 do something over there with you. 
Uh, yeah, let's keep talking. Let's keep the conversation going. I yeah, was yeah, I was yeah. just in Montgomery last month too. I should have I should have made time to come out and visit. I did. I screwed that up. Make me an angel that flies from Montgomery. Man, here in uh, here in Huntsville, man, the FBI is moving down here. DEA is moving down here. Department of Homeland Security. Facebook is setting up a headquarters. Toyota is expanding. It's going to be maddening here. So these guys are doing festivals and stuff every weekend. Different events, man. It's it's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. But it's time for me to put some food in their bellies. They need yes, some flavor is. they've never had before. Now, is that is that Daphne or Dauphine Island? You know what I'm talking about? What do you mean? It, it, down down in the Mobile Bay area, there's a place that's called Dauphine. Or is it oh pretty- yeah yeah yeah. That's not in Mobile. That's down off the coast, man. I'm I'm way up inland. I'm about two hours from Nashville. Yeah, that's the, that's down in Mobile Bay. Is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the the reason I bring that up, you you gentlemen heard it's really cool, and, and I encourage you to go down there because it, it's just a very interesting spot to go check out. But you heard the expression "damn it, torpedoes." Yes, that's yeah. where that came from. During the Civil War, the Confederates had uh, blockaded the mouth of the harbor back then with those floating mines, those big round balls. Yeah, those were those were also called torpedoes back then. And Admiral Farragut, oh, okay. Admiral Farragut, a Union admiral, was 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 gonna head north up in, the, in that bay, and that's when he gave the order: "Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead." That's a good thing to be known for, especially if you make it. <laughs> <laughs> especially if you live to tell about it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, listen, I, I don't want to take up all you guys' time because you're right. You need to get food in some people's bellies. You guys got to check out. Otto's book, A Chef is Born. You can get it. I'm going it. to buy the book. Is it on Amazon? Yeah, and I'll tell you what, Mad Dog, if you want, just PM me on. Are you on Facebook? Of course I'm on Facebook. All right, so uh, of course you Under are. Under Chef Mad Dog Maggard. All right, so so I'll look you up or you look me up and just message me and I will, I will give, I'll give you instructions. And, and just so if you buy the book, send it to me direct from Amazon and then give me your address and I'll ship it back to you uh, free of charge, of course, Fine. autograph. That's awesome. Let's do it. Yeah. It, right. A chef is born. Right, you can get it on Amazon. And then Chef Mad Dog Maggard on all social media. Definitely check out his videos. And hopefully in a Metro bus in your city soon. <laughs> all right, Pete. Thanks for having me, brother. Thanks, fellas. Okay. Taste the freedom. <laughs>